Praise the Lord. Genesis chapter 37. Genesis chapter 37. Look at verse number 1. Genesis 37, verse number 1. It says, And Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. These are the generation of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brethren, and the lad was with, his, with the sons of Bilhah uh, and with the sons of Zippah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought unto his father their evil report. Uh, now Israel loved Joseph more than all his, uh, all his children, because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all his brethren, they hated him and could not speak peaceably unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream, and he told it to his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Here I pray you this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my sheep arose and also stood upright. And behold, your sheep stood round about and made obeyance to my sheep. And his brother said unto him, Shall thou indeed reign over us? And sh or shall thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream and told his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obeyance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, What is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come, down, come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren envied him, but his father observed the same. Jump down to verse number 19. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Amen, amen. Today, I want to talk to you about something I heard from God. I was, I was, I had just, the Spirit of God woke me up early one morning this past week. And he said, tell my people to dream again. <laughs> That's the word from the Lord today. Dream again, amen. But Billy, it's getting kind of cold, amen. Dream again, amen. To dream again. Now, in that, God said that my people are not dreaming anymore simply because of the situation and circumstances that they're going through. And I need for them to understand that I want them to dream again, amen? amen. Dream of better. Dream of bigger, amen? Dream of larger, amen? Because that's what God wants us to do is to dream again, amen? amen? Now, it got so much in me that God wanted us to dream again that he said, the dream must start with you. And you must dream again, amen? And so, so, so I, I took that word at heart that God was speaking to me about dreaming again. And, uh, and so, so one of the dreams that I have had for a long time was, was the aircraft. Amen. And so one of the things that God told me to do was, now, I want you to dream again. Yeah. And I want you to go out to the airport and I want you to see yourself doing what I called you to do. <laughs> and so on Friday, on Friday, this past Friday, I went out to the airport. Just a dream. I went out there where all the jets were. Just a dream. And then on Saturday, God said, dream again. So I, I got up Saturday morning. I went back out to the airport. And I said, today I will fly an aircraft. Just a dream. <laughs> so, so I flew an aircraft on, on, on Saturday. Amen. Because God wanted me to dream. He said, dream again, son. Dream again. And so I got behind the, the cockpit. <laughs> what a wonderful thing, amen. So myself and Matthew, we went out to the airport. And, uh, uh, and so uh, we got in the plane, and he put me in the, in the captain's seat. Yeah. And uh, I taxied my way to the takeoff point. And, uh, you know, I didn't know that, that when you fly aircraft, when you're on the ground, that you don't drive with a little stick. You drive with your feet. And so, so the guy kept on telling me, he said, no, he said, don't even touch that thing. Don't touch it yet. Drive with your feet, your left and right pedal. And so, so as it was, uh, I got to the place to where we were about to take off. 
and he took his hands off of his stick. And he told me, it's all up to you. I said, I'm a dream again. <laughs> so I started going faster and faster down that runway. And then I pulled back on the lever and I took off. And God began to say, this is what I'm talking about. I want you to tell my people that they could dream again. Don't worry about the circumstances that you're going through. God say, dream again. Amen. 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 Again. Now, here's the thing about a dream. It don't cost you nothing to dream. Amen. It doesn't cost you anything for you to dream again. And so, so now, now here, here, here's God's process with me. Whenever God places a dream in my spirit, he tells me to go get a picture of what it looks like. Amen. So while I was there at the airport, I grabbed me a magazine with jets so I could dream again. On my way back from the airport, I stopped at the car dealership, got me a picture of the car I want Amen. to dream again. Amen. 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 Then I stopped at another dealership for the truck I want, got a picture of the truck I want so I can dream again. Amen. And it don't cost you nothing to dream. But God wants his people to dream again. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, go to Proverbs chapter 29. Proverbs chapter 29. A dream is a divine portrait of potential, of possibilities. Uh, it's potential, possibilities that we as believers have. And the good thing about a dream is that God gives us a dream. Amen? In Proverbs 29, God says, look at verse number 18, Proverbs 29, verse 18. Where there is no vision, no dream, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. God says without a dream, without a vision, that I'm going to perish. So you as believers must understand that God wants you to dream again. Because without a dream, you will perish. Amen, amen, amen. Now, now, go to Luke chapter 1. Here's the thing about a dream. That when God gives me a dream for better, it must be conceived in our spirit. Amen. You cannot give birth until you receive it in your spirit. Amen. And so the faith action that I took conceives it in my spirit, man, and will one day give birth to it. Oh, my goodness. Amen. Luke chapter 1. Look at verse number 38. Luke chapter 1. Verse number 38. Hallelujah. Look what he says. Let's start at verse 37. Look what he says. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. For with God, Nothing shall be impossible. Even though the dream may look impossible to you, with God, nothing is impossible. I would have thought that it would be impossible for me to fly an aircraft. But with God, nothing is impossible. Amen. And Mary said, Behold, thy handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Now, this is on the backdrop of the angel going to Mary and said that she was highly favored of God, that she was going to conceive Jesus in her womb. Now, she was not going to have the, the partnership of a man to get Jesus into the earth for him, but the Spirit of God would come upon her, and she would conceive this child. And Mary had to say, Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. Amen. And I believe that right now some of you have dreams in you that God has placed in you, and you have to declare and decree that be it unto me According to thy word. God, you said it. I believe it to be so. And it's going to happen in my life. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now go back to Genesis chapter number 11. Genesis chapter number 11. As long as I cannot imagine a thing. As long as I can't imagine it. As long as I can't see it. Then it, I will never possess it. Amen? If I can't imagine it. If I cannot see it. I cannot possess it, amen? And so what God wants us to do is to get our imagination working. 
Because if we can't imagine a thing, that thing is possible for us. Amen? Right. <laughs> Amen. Genesis chapter number 11. Genesis chapter number 11. Look at verse number 6. Genesis chapter 11, verse number 6. Dream again. Dream again. Tell your neighbor, dream again. Dream again. Amen. Tell him again, dream again. dream again. Praise the Lord. Look at verse number 6. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Now, I really like how the Amplifier puts this. And the Lord said, Behold, there are one people, they have all one language, and this is only the beginning of what they will do. And now nothing they have imagined they can do will be impossible for them. So if I can imagine it, amen, it could be done. Now, I don't care where you come from, what side of the track you grew up on, if you can imagine a thing, God says, it's possible for you. And so you got to dream again, amen? Dream. See, see, last week I talked about coming out, amen? Now, you have to dream that you're already out of that thing, amen? Amen. Oh, I wish sister, uh, oh, she's not here today. She came up to me last week uh, and told me, uh, she said, Pastor, Sister Cobb, she said, Pastor, I came out twice last week, yeah. amen? Amen. And I told her, I said, well, when you come to church on Sunday, I want you to give your testimony. Amen. She said, I'm coming out, Pastor. She said, I came out twice. Amen. And listen now, you have to dream bigger than where you are right now. Woo, praise the Lord. First Chronicles, First Chronicles, chapter 4. Hallelujah. See, many of you don't have a dream big enough that will require God to get involved in your situation. See, the dream you have is only based upon what you can do. But God is telling you to dream beyond what you can think of. <laughs> First Chronicles chapter number four. Watch this, watch this. First Chronicles chapter four. Ooh, praise the Lord. Look at verse number nine. First Chronicles chapter four, verse number nine. Look what it says. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me indeed, and enlarge my coast, and that thine hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. And God granted him that which he requested. See, when I have a dream bigger than myself and I ask God to enlarge my territory, give me bigger things, God, than I already have, God says, he'll honor that request. Oh, my goodness. Amen. Go to Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter number 3. Amen. Dream again. Dream again. It doesn't cost us anything to dream. And God says, I can do far over and above what you ask or think. Oh, my goodness. All I have to do is learn how to dream again. Amen. Dream of your relationship being better. Yeah. Dream of your kids finishing college. Dream, just dream, amen. amen. Dream bigger than what you have. Amen. Ephesians chapter 3. <laughs> Watch this. Ephesians chapter number 3. Look at verse number 20. Ephesians chapter 3. Verse number 20. Tell my people to dream again. Look what it says, now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works in us. Amplify says, now to him who by in consequence of the action of his power that is at work within us is able to carry out his purpose and do super abundantly, far over and above all that we dare ask or think, infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, or dreams. God says, I'll do more than what you dream, but I got to get you to dream again. Amen? I got I to get you to the super abundant that I, I promise you, Amen? And uh, I tell you, man, when, 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 when I was in that aircraft, 
I just began to think about what God told me many years ago. That he would give us the wings of faith to carry this gospel around the world. And that if I would not lose the dream, even though time is involved, that he would give me the desires of my heart. Amen. See, see, that's, what, that's the trick of the devil. See, the trick of the devil will, will, will have time take place in your life where it will seem like God ain't able, that he's not going to do super abundantly above all that you ask or think. And so what the devil says, it's been 10 years since God gave you that dream. But see, there's no distance in time with God. A day with God is like a thousand years and a thousand years like a day. God don't care about time. All he cares about is, can you dream? Can you dream bigger than where you are right now? Hallelujah. And what I'm trying to do today is, I'm trying to encourage you to go out and dream. Amen. Go, go to an open house today. Amen. Just go walk around the house and just see what the house looks like. Amen. Walk around there and say, you know, one day, one day, God, this could be me. <laughs> I praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. All right. Go, go, go to uh, Proverbs chapter 23. Proverbs 23. Proverbs 23. Dream again. Dream again. Dream again. Dream about your future. Amen. Get your eyesight off of where you are right now. Amen. And start looking at what is possible for you. God says, if you can't believe it, Jada, it's possible for you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Proverbs 23. Watch this. Watch this. Proverbs 23. Amen. I'm telling you how God works this thing. Proverbs 23. Because if I could dream a, a thing, then that thing becomes possible for me. Proverbs 23. Look at verse number 18. Proverbs 23, verse 18. For surely there is an end, and thine expectation, your dream, should not be cut off. Woo! Your dream won't be cut off. Your dream will not be cut off. Jeremiah 29. Jeremiah 29. Amen. Jeremiah 29. Look at verse number 11. Jeremiah 29, verse number 11. Watch this. Look what he says. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, said the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil. To give you an expected end. God said, I'll give you your expectation. Amen. He said, I, look, I'm not thinking evil of you. I'm thinking good of you. Amen. And I'm going to give you your expectation. Ooh, praise the Lord. Amen. See, I like that, man, because, see, when the dream killers show up, it ain't about their expectation. It's about my expectation. Amen. When the dream stillers show up to try to steal my joy, it ain't about their expectation. It's about my expectation. Amen. When the dream suckers show up <laughs> to try to suck the life out of me, it ain't about their dream. It's about my dream. And so what the devil will do, the devil will try to play the time factor with you, and then they'll try to get, put people around you to try to steal your dream from you. Amen. And you, gotta, you have to understand that it ain't about nobody else but you and God. And here's the thing about a dream. God places the dream in your brother's future. God does. It, see, that didn't just come from you. God placed that in you for you to believe for better. Okay, Psalms 37. Psalms 37. I remember living in the projects. Amen. And God placed a dream inside of me of better. That this is not the end of the story for you. Amen. But if I would have chosen to neglect the dream, set the dream aside because of what people were saying, then I would have still been where I was then even right now. Watch this. Psalms 37. Psalms 37. Look at verse number 4. Psalms 37. Let's start at verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land and verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself also in the Lord and he shall give thee the desires of your heart. Look how good God is. 
the dream or the desire that you have in your heart. God says, if I trust in him and do good, he'll give me the desires of my heart. If I dream again. Dream again. Amen. And see, right now, right now, some of you have let situations, you have let the economy steal your dream. Yeah. Yeah. And God would not give me this word today if he didn't know that he wanted you to dream again. Amen, amen, amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. He wants you to dream again. Now, when you have a dream, watch this now, you need to document that dream. See, some of you are having nightmares and, and documenting nightmares. Amen. You need to document the dream of better that you have. Amen. And, and that's why, that's why, that's why you go and get a picture of what God placed in your spirit. Now, see, see, some of y'all think, well, no, I, I'm not going to do that. I, before Sister Gwen and I built our house, we had already uh, furnished the house with all the furniture that we wanted. We would cut out pictures out of a magazine and put it on the cardboard and say, look, oh, look how, look how our house looks. Now, it, it had never manifested yet, but we already knew what we wanted in the house. And then over a period of time, God gave us the desires of our heart. God raised somebody up to just go, come to the house and say, look, go to the furniture store, pick out whatever you want, and we got it. <laughs> but you have to have a dream. See, here's the thing. What if God told somebody to come to you right now and just take care of your dream? Just, just tell you, hey, I'm going to take care of your dream. Yeah. See, some, now some of y'all say, I'm going to dream again now. I'm going to dream again. <laughs> I'm ready to dream again, Pastor. Yeah. But no, just came to the house and said, hey, listen, you know, what, 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 what do you want in your house? Just, just tell, tell me what you want, and we'll go get it right now. But if you don't know what you want, what you desire, if God did raise up somebody somewhere to use their power, ability, their influence to help you, because you don't know what you're dreaming about, guess what? They can't take care of you. You'll be stumbling. You'll be like, uh, 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 no, no. It's, you need to know. Document that thing. The Bible says this in Habakkuk 2. Write the vision down. Write the dream down. Make it plain so that those that read it can run with it. Amen. You got to write that thing down. Amen, amen, amen. Woo, praise the Lord, amen. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Watch this now. Watch this. Every dream will be assaulted by some haters. Here in the story that we read in Genesis 37, Joseph have a dream of better. He goes and tells his brethren, the people that you would think would be happy for him. But the Bible says that when he told them his dream, that they hated him the more. Uh-oh. Here's another thing about dreams that we need to be careful about. That you cannot share your dreams with everybody that you come in contact with. Amen. Now, see, see, on, on, on this past week, I did not tell anybody but Sister Gwen what God had dropped in my spirit. Because I didn't want anybody to tell me that you couldn't do that. You're a boy from the hood. Ain't no way you're going to fly no plane. So I, I kept it to myself. I did not even tell my children until after the fact. I, I woke Matthew up and said, hey, man, just come with me. Come with me. He said, Daddy, where we going? I said, we're going out to the airport. He said, what are we going to do at the airport? I said, we're going to look at planes. He said, okay, I'll come look at some planes. He didn't know that I had in my heart that we're going to fly a plane today. <laughs> See, there are just some people that you just can't tell your dream. Because they will talk you out of your dream. Amen. See, when I'm dreaming again, I got to know who I can talk to. I got to know I have an Elizabeth there to talk to. Because she's in the same condition that I'm in. 
She got a dream inside of her. <laughs> yeah. See, I, 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 got, I, I got to be careful. I got, I got a dream again. But I got to be careful who I talk to. Because the haters will show up every time. Amen. They will tell you that you can't do it. You know, you know, oh, you got to be careful with who you share your dreams because they're going to criticize you. They're going to persecute you. They're going to tell you, oh, you think you're better than us. How is it that you think that I'm better than you and we came from the same household? No, the challenge is, the challenge is I have a dream and you don't. Amen. The persecution. Are you willing to handle the persecution that will come as a result of you having a bigger dream, of you asking God to enlarge your coast, enlarge your territory? See, because I believe with all my heart that whatever we ask of God, he's going to do it for us. And if we ask God to enlarge our territory, enlarge our coast, God's going to do that. As long as I obey God, do what God tells me to do, God will do exactly what I ask of him. See, here's the thing. See, we think that God's going to give us a substitute for what we've been asking for. God is not like that. God is, will give you exactly what you ask for. Amen. So if you ask God to enlarge your territory, he will do just that. And so, so, so Matthew and I, we, 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 we there, we there, we there. And uh, uh, so the guy tells me, he said, he said, listen, go around on the other side. And so Matt says, what? You going, you going to fly the plane? <laughs> so he gets in the back. <laughs> and uh, so we get, up there in the, we get up there in the clouds. And the, and the guy says, he said, well, now what I want you to do is I want you to turn the plane. I'm like, okay. So we start, it, it's, it's amazing how God does this thing, man. So we start to turn it. And he said, now, now let me take control of it and, and let me do something with you. So he said, I'm going to take you up. And then we're just going to fall. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, now I didn't put in for all that. <laughs> this is my dream and not my nightmare. <laughs> I just want to fly this thing. But now, if I would have, if I would have waited for other people to persecute me for being bold enough, see now, now that, that's a word right there. You got to be bold enough to step out on faith, even though others have never done what you're trying to do. Yeah, yeah. See, your dream is beyond your family. Amen. And you have to have the boldness enough to step out and the courage enough to obey God and just go do a thing. <laughs> but you will be persecuted. Yeah, you will. You'll be persecuted. Amen. Amen. All right. Not only that. Go to James chapter 2. A dream will cause you to step out of your comfort zone. Amen. While I was sitting there, Brother Pew, on Friday, just walking around the hangar, I see this private plane fly in. And uh, I see this family get off the plane. And they're all laughing and joking and having a good time. And, and God said to me, to me, why can't that be you? <laughs> y'all look, look like, what? Why can't that be you? But now you have to do something in order to be there. Okay? Watch this. James chapter 2. Ooh, watch this. Watch this. James chapter 2. Look at verse number 17. James chapter 2, verse 17. Even so, faith, if it hath not 
works is dead, being alone. The Amplifier says, so also faith, if it does not have works, deeds, and actions of obedience to back it up, by itself is destitute of power, inoperative, is dead. If you don't have anything backing it up, you haven't done anything to back up your dream, it's destitute, inoperative, it's dead. So my faith action was, God, I'm going to just go to the airport. Where are the planes at? They ain't in the mall. So ain't no sense in me going to the mall for a plane. They not there. You going to the wrong places. You've been wanting a house, but you've been going to the apartment complexes. Ain't nothing wrong with an apartment complex. Don't get, don't get me wrong. But what I'm saying is if God placed a dream in your heart to have a house, go look at one. Go look at one. They got open houses all over Beaumont. It don't say, they, look, they're not telling you to put some money down today. They're just telling you to come walk around the house. Amen. And see, if you're bold, you do what God told Joshua. Every place the sole of your foot shall tread is yours. Now, see, what they didn't understand what I was doing these last two days, I was just going to put my feet on some stuff. Can I go sit on that plane? <laughs> Look, I, I, I know it belongs to somebody else, but can I just go sit on it? Yeah, let, let me just go sit on it and see myself, just see myself. Yeah, yes, yes. Because if I could believe it and see it, I can have it. Yes, pilot, I'm ready to take off. <laughs> I won't be flying. No, no. I, I figured out yesterday I didn't want to be the pilot. I, I, I did not want to fly. I want somebody else to do the flying for me. But no, no, no. But you have, you have to be willing to put some action, some corresponding action to what you believe in God for, the dream that he has in your heart. See, many of you are just sitting back and said, God, I'm just going to wait on you. And you haven't done anything, nothing, to qualify you to have your dream. Okay. What kind of car you want? Go test driving. Act like, look, it don't matter. They want to sell you a car. You ain't buying it today. Just go drive the thing. Put it, lean back. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I mean, play with all the gadgets. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But you got to, look, it doesn't, the, the point I'm trying to say is this. If you have no corresponding action with the dream that God has placed in, in you, it's dead. And I'm trying to wake up the dream that God has in you. Amen? I'm, I'm trying to stir that thing up in you so that you go do something. Say, God, I, I know I don't have the money right now, but that's okay. I'm just, look, I'm just going to dream right now. I'm just going to dream. Amen. He, 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 here's where I lay my head determines how big my dream is. Oh. Okay. Here's what I mean by that. There are times where you might need to go rent a suite. Yeah. I mean, it's a one-time thing for you, but, but you got to see a sweet in action. Oh, my goodness. I, I'm, trying to show, I'm trying to show you how to dream big. See, because where I lay my head down will determine the size of my dream. I mean, think about it. So, so that, that time, look, just go lay down in the suite. Say, look, I, I need to rent the suite tonight. Amen. Take your wife to the suite. Praise the Lord. Let her dream with you. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We'll move on, Pastor, because you're almost out of time. You're almost out of time. Almost out of time. Whoop. 
praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, go to uh, Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. In order for me to, to, to have the dream manifest, it will require that I not have weak faith, but I must have strong faith, okay? There is a difference between the two. Amen. Romans chapter 4. Amen. Romans chapter 4, look at verse number 17. Romans chapter 4, verse number 17. Watch this. Romans 4, verse number 17. <clears throat> look what it says. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed, even God who quickened the, the dead and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to also to perform. Now, this is the story of Abraham and Sarah. God goes to Abraham back in Genesis chapter 15. And Abraham begins to complain to God that, hey, God, I have no heir to leave all my stuff to. And, he, and then God tells Abraham, say that you don't have a seed because I'm going to give you a seed. And he says, now, in order for me to get you to see what I'm talking about, I need to give you a demonstration of what is possible for you. So God takes him out and tells him to look up at the stars. Get a picture of this, Abraham. If you can look up at the stars and count them, that's how your descendants will be. And then on another occasion, he takes him out to the, uh, to the, to the, to the beach. And he says, look at the sand, and if you can count the number of sands, that's how your descendants are going to be. Now, he didn't take him out to Galveston. He took him out to the pretty beaches, amen? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. I mean, he took him out to the blue, the blue there. Praise the Lord. <laughs> yeah. But he had to give him a picture of better. Okay. And then because Abraham believed God, that God, what you just told me and what you just showed me will happen in my life. Now, it took Abraham 25 years before it manifested. Amen. That time that I told you about earlier, but he believed God, he was strong in faith, and he gave glory to God. And then the Bible says that he was fully persuaded that what God had promised, he was also able to perform. Now, here's the thing. God's ability is never in question. When it comes down to your dream, God's ability is never in question. No, it is never in question. Now, I, 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 I truly believe God that, that uh, whoo, praise the Lord. See, I, I, I just have, this, I just have this, 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 this mentality that whatever God says, I just believe it. I believe the day is coming. I, I was, to take y'all back to the hangar. I was, we were walking, they had like eight planes in the hangar. And so myself and Matthew and, this, and the pilot was walking around the, 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 uh, the little, uh, thing there and uh hangar and we were walking past this this lear jet and i and, and I, I told the pilot i said well this one got dust on it i said this one haven't looked like it haven't been flown in a while he said yeah he said yeah pastor this one haven't been flown in over a year and so i start thinking <laughs> yeah i did i i i start i start thinking i'm like well who, this, who, who owns this thing? Because a plane is meant to be flown, not to be cooped up in some, some hangar. So, you know, I'm going to find out who owns the plane, and I'm going to call them. I have nothing to lose. Look, I have, what, what I just said? I have nothing to lose. I don't want your aircraft. I just want to fly it for a while. Yeah, you've you been sitting, this thing, it's going to fall apart if nobody flies it. 
So you might as well let me fly the plane where I need to go. Yeah. And then that was another, that was another plane. I said, well, that, that one got dust on it too. He said, oh, that one haven't been flown either. I said, oh, oh yeah, so praise the Lord. Hercules. <laughs> praise the Lord, amen. I said, yeah, I'll be back. I'll be, I'll be back. <laughs> yes, I will. I will be back. But here's the thing. Even if they tell me no, I haven't lost anything. I haven't lost a thing. Amen. But what if they tell me yes? What if, yeah, what if they tell me, look, I need a tax write-off. And I'll just sow the plane into the ministry. But is your dream big enough for that? Then people be lining up, Ethan. <laughs> Pastor, can I fly? Can I fly with you? <laughs> but Abram believed God, and he was fully persuaded that what God promised him, he was able to perform. Are you so loud enough to believe God for your dream? Are, are you fully persuaded that whatever God promised, he's able to perform it? Hey, Sister, Sister Sharon, do we have, a, do we have some cups in the, in, the, in the closet over there? Could, Billy, could you give me a cup out of the closet? One of the Billies, one, just one of y'all, one of the Billies. We got a Billy over here and a Billy over there. Praise the Lord. You're not fully persuaded until it overflows. And I, that, that, that's what I want to demonstrate to you. See, some people are quarter persuaded. They just believe, God, I'm just going to believe you for my salvation. And God will save you. Praise God for that. But then there's others who are halfway persuaded. I, God, I, I, I think you can heal me. But then if you're fully persuaded, nothing is impossible for you. <laughs> nothing is impossible for you. Abram was fully persuaded that what God had promised him. Well, you got a big cup. <laughs> I don't know if I have enough water for that. Yeah, big dreams. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I got two waters. Okay, let's just say that this cup represents what you believe. And this bottle of water is God's promises to you. Now, how much of God's promises you want? Want to just cup just a little bit? Or do you want to get to the place where you are fully persuaded that whatever God promised you, He's gonna perform? Amen. 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 Woo! Praise the Lord. Thank you, brother. You. Woo! That's some good stuff. That's the promises, amen. I receive, I receive the promises. Amen. 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 Now, now, here's the thing. Don't despise your small beginnings. Don't see, see, you see, some of you are looking at it and saying, Well, I, I would never be able to do that. Don't despise where you are right now. It's just the beginning. Elijah tells his servant. Go and see if rain is coming. He goes out and looks, and he comes back and say, Master, I see nothing. He said, go back again and again and again. And then he says, Master, I see a cloud the size of a man's hand. And he said, get down because the rain is coming. <laughs> see, it's the little things that you see. Yeah, it might look little now, but eventually that thing gonna come and flood your life. Amen. 
praise the Lord. Amen, amen. Now, 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 now. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Here's the thing. I, I have to know the reality. Go back to Luke chapter 1, Luke chapter 1. I have to know the reality of God's word. Amen. Luke chapter 1. Look at verse number 38 again. Luke chapter 1, verse 37. Verse 37. I'm going to read it out of the Amplified. <clears throat> For with God, nothing is ever impossible. And no word from God shall be without power or impossible of fulfillment. So, no for with God, nothing is ever impossible. Nothing is ever impossible. And no word from God shall be without the power or impossible for fulfillment. So if God woke me up early the other morning and told, gave me a word to dream again and to go out to the airport and dream again, then that word from God is now impossible for me. Amen. Hallelujah. So what, what you going to do? What you going to do? See, you, you, you heard pastor talk about me dreaming again. What you going to do? Are you going to sit here and just say, oh, that's a good word from the pastor, praise the Lord, and then go home and then just say, I ain't doing none of that stuff. That's him. Let him go walk on the airport. Amen. Or are you going to take the dream that God placed in you and begin to dream again that it's possible for me? Amen. I'm looking for dreamers. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking for dreamers. Amen. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not looking for folk who uh, just want to have nightmares. Amen. Because dreamers are optimistic. Amen. Dreamers have a sense of, let's get her done. Amen. Are you willing to be a dreamer and to dream again? Amen. And that's the question that you have to ask yourself. Can I dream again? Can I dream bigger than where I am right now? Can I dream beyond my resources? Amen. Can I do it? Amen. You have to answer that question. And I got to stop because I am out of time. Give God a big hand of praise. Amen. <laughs>